Mike, a theist from from Georgia, and he says it was flying creatures, not birds, but were created during creation. Uh, Mike from Georgia, you are on the atheist experience with three of my favorite people. All right. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, um, you know, that was pretty quick. I was on um, hold for at least a minute. Um, I just like to thank you for allowing me to be on the show. I know you all are busy people, and I know that you all probably have thousands of people calling in, and it's always lovely to speak to y'all. Um, I just wanted to clear something up. Um, I found that one of the uh, speakers, it wasn't neither of you gentlemen, it was the uh, speaker kind of with with the uh, cute little hairstyle, kind of like, kind of like yellowish hair. I forgot his name, but he talked about how the Bible was wrong when it came to the fifth day of creation and how it said that birds came uh, along with the uh, land animals, and thus this is wrong because dinosaurs, uh, because birds evolved from dinosaurs, and mm -hmm. which would make the creation. Um, would make the creation order wrong. I just like to say that in the Hebrew, it translates to flying creatures, not birds. So a lot of times uh, people would like view the Bible as an English book and would, would view like the English translations as the be all end all when you need to realize that it's Hebrew and it makes more sense because- Well, if well Mike, the Bible can, Mike can, I, can I interrupt real quick? because i i, I want to not forget a point you made um i don't know if you were talking to forrest you might have been talking to forrest but uh like i I'm, I'm okay with any of these moments where it's like hey there's some ambiguity with the language it might not have meant this or that but presumably like you have a view where you you know what it says like you, you think what it says you make a claim about what it says and that's not like compatible with you know by Bio evolutionary biology. So there's a difference between the views. So I think it'd be better just to kind of understand what your view is, what kind of like, does it make any predictions? Is it just a story? Like, can we have any expectations given the Christian theistic hypothesis? What should we should expect in the, the future with cre uh, creatures? So I just, to me, it seems like an, 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 like an inert just so story. And I'm not really interested in getting into like the minutia of that. I just want to know like, what's your view and what evidence can you give me so that I can just join your team, right? That seems like an easier way to go about it. What do you think about that? I don't really understand. Um, well, I mean, it sounds all good, but I don't really understand what you mean by what's my view. I'm just simply talking about like the Hebrew and how the Hebrew translations affect, uh, affect the English. More well, like what, what, I, what I'm concerned on is is explaining the biodiversity in the world, not like this game about language and what somebody could mean. You presumably do have a view in terms of you think the Bible is correct. But I'm asking, like, what when I look at the biodiversity in the world, I don't see that that's compatible with the story that the Bible gives. Right. But I see like predictions that are made in evolutionary biology, right? phenomena being described and modeled optimal like uh, prey predator ratios or optimal foraging, foraging statistics. Or we have like all of this massive stuff. I'm asking like, what do you have on that end? Cause I have like this giant sack of stuff on one side and I'm looking at the other side. And I'm like, it's not clear to me that you even have anything, right? Well, uh, let me make this clear. I have nothing because I'm not science. I mean, science more or less is something that uh, we discover and I have nothing particular. Now, what do you? What are you asking particularly? Like, why should we believe this? Why should we? I'm asking why should we? Why should we believe that the the biblical account gives the best account for biodiversity in the world? That's all I'm asking. Why should you believe? Well, well, I don't really. Other than other than the um, Bible, I don't really um, I don't really know why you should believe because it's always an individual by individual basis why they believe. Why do you believe? Uh, but I, don't, I can't really speak on why. Uh, why do you why do you believe? Why do you believe? 
Uh, more or less, more or less, I believe because of my father. My father had an experience with an angel in which he told me about this, and I totally outright believe him. And he told me this uh, detail of him having this experience with an angel, more or less, when he was in a um, coma, and he was. Um, do you think that's a good methodology to listen to what someone else's like you would agree that their experience is necessarily first person to them you didn't experience it do you think it's like seems to me like it's sloppy to accept the word of somebody else even if there's someone really trusted to you on that claim like i mean i don't know johnny or kelly what do you got because like this to me just seems like we've highlighted now the methodology and like the direct issue with where you where your chain of reasoning is going because if you're accepting it based on like your father's experience like i'm not trying to take anything away from your father the valued experience that he might have or what you took out of it but is that really a good method to determine that there's truth to that because i don't i i'm actually wondering what the point is all right i'm sorry who who, who else is uh speaking because i'm not watching the show i don't know oh. when you all are speaking or not all i hear is noises so if somebody's gonna speak just just say, hey, I'm going to speak, and then I'm going to let you uh, talk. That's not how we're going to do it. I'm sorry, Mike. It's our show, and you can participate in our show, or you cannot. But here's how it's going to work, okay? Kelly has a question for you. Why don't you answer Kelly's I don't question? Speak over anybody. That's why. Oh, I know you don't. I know okay. you don't. I think you're polite. So rather than talking about talking, let's just talk. So Kelly, ask a question. He's going to verbally okay. indicate that there is a period on the end of that question, or a question mark, rather. Question and mark, then yeah. you'll answer that as best you can. And if you can't, just say you don't know. So go ahead, Kelly, and ask your question. I, I'm wondering what, what is the significance of your argument? I, 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 from what I understand you're saying is, is that where it, it says that God created all the flying creatures, not just birds, right? Okay, let's say we grant that to you. What difference does that make? I just wanted to point this out for clarification because a lot of times when people read this in English and they see birds, they're like, ah, okay, so Genesis has it wrong in the order scale because everybody knows that, of course, reptiles came from land animals and then uh, reptiles formed into birds after a certain amount of time. I just wanted to clarify that when it came to that. Now, if you want to talk about other subjects, we can. Yeah, yeah, that's clearly finish. what- You all can speak. Thank you so much for that. Uh, bookmarking is very helpful. Signposting, some people call it. <laughs> um, so Mike from Georgia, thank you, thank you. I will acknowledge to you that the Bible may say flying things as opposed to birds, all right? Um, that's all good and fine. No one who does any advanced research into the study of birds or flying things uses the Bible as a source of uh, information, especially any passages within Genesis. The information is effectively useless to us in any meaningful way of learning anything new or functional about birds. So it's jolly good that the Bible says that God created flying things. And we all know that the spies of Saruman oftentimes are birds. Many spies have many eyes. Who cares what an ancient uh, Bronze, Age, Bronze Age sex manual says about flying things? So to go back to what Kelly said and to go back to what J. Mike said, it sounds like, although you called to talk about how people erroneously treat the Bible as an English textbook or an English written book. We're like, yeah, you're right. You, that's true. And we don't, we, we kind of skip over that, right? We kind of just go to, uh, we'll address arguments as though it's written in English because we're not going to go into the linguistic history, the etymology of every, of every phrase and prepositional you know, clause and what have you. But notwithstanding that it sounds like you care about what the bible says and it sounds like you care about the bible says because you believe in it and the reason why you believe in it you've identified as an experience that you've gotten from your father who has given you a personal testament of his own experience while he was in a coma of his experiences with a uh, an angel now i'm going to ask you this okay 
do you believe every single thing that your father tells you? It's depending on what he tells me, but um, in general, no. Okay, why? Why don't you believe every single thing that your father tells you? I mean, it's situational. It's depending on what he tells me. I mean, I, I can't give you an overall like like reason why, but if I have to, if, if a gun to my head and I have to answer, it's because humans can be wrong and humans could err, and that's my answer. You can, uh, uh, I, I'm done speaking. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you again for the signposting. So humans can be wrong. Humans can be in error. You don't believe your father in everything he says because you're not an unintelligent person. You know that sometimes people get it wrong and it's not because they're stupid or they're irresponsible or because they're evil in any way. It's just the nature of human existence, correct? Absolutely. Okay, question. So if your father said, I, I witnessed a car accident on the way home, right? That's a pretty banal situation. You're like, well, oh, that's tell tell me about it. And he told you about it. And he said a red car and a blue car collided, and the ambulance uh, was there. The traffic was stopped. You'd probably believe him, right? Because car accidents happen, and people see car accidents. And he described the usual kind of things that would happen when a car accident would take place, right? You come, you probably believe it. You take it uh, on his word alone, right? Absolutely. But what if he said? On the way home, I saw a pterodactyl fly out of the sky and carry away a Bichon Frigé puppy. Would you believe him if he said that? I would be highly skeptical, but I would I would hold my belief until I get some more evidence. Why, 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 why do you think that is? Why do you think you're skeptical of that? Um, because pterodactyls haven't existed in a long time, and I don't know what the hell a Bichon, uh, whatever the heck you just said. So that's why. It's a poodle. It's like a it's like a poodly dog. It's not a poodle. Forget. I, I apologize to all the poodle like fans out there. Poodle? It's it's a lap dog. It's a little fluffy lap dog. I've had friends with them. They're wonderful little dogs. They bark a lot. But so your why, father. Why are y'all being so fancy? <laughs> you know, I am as God made me. So if. If your yeah. father, if your father came home and said, "I was, I was driving home, right, and I was in a, a vehicle accident, and my head hit the steering wheel, and I was, I was uh, semi-conscious, I was delirious, I vomited on the street, I lost consciousness, and I woke up, and I saw the paramedics and the police next to me." and I saw a pterodactyl, right? You might say, I wonder if the fact that he was in a vehicular collision may have been the reason why he saw something that I know no one ever sees because they're extinct. No, right? Notice how that raises the prior probability that that could explain it, right? When you have those things available to you. But absent those things, like your prior probability of assuming that that there was a pterodactyl, it's just it's like non-existent. But it's, it seems similarly the case with angels, right? Like, I don't have any, I don't know about you, I've never been visited by an angel. I've never seen them. I don't know that they're documented. People talk about them and have imaginations wow. about them. But presumably, if you agree with what Johnny said, and you don't have the angel, but you have the story of all the details, but you're missing kind of the crucial component, why would we think that there's a, a, a higher likelihood <laughs> that that story is true. To me, it seems very clear that it's kind of antithetical to all of the background information that we all share together. More importantly, he was in a coma. Mike from Georgia, he was in a coma. And in my scenario, my hypothetical, he was in a vehicular collision and bumped his head. In both situations, there has been some no, trauma to the person's... Say again? He fell out of a helicopter. He didn't hit his wow. He fell out of a helicopter. He was actually right. blown off. Of, he yeah. Uh, Mike, I think you're missing my point. In in okay, in your very in your in your real life scenario, your father fell out of a helicopter and was in a coma. Sorry to hear that. I hope that he was all right. Although I imagine for a while he was not. I'm talking about in my hypothetical, 
he was in a, a vehicle accident and he hit his head. In either event, he is in a state where he had either brain injury or some sort of traumatic physical injury that caused him to not be in a conscious state interacting with individuals in the usual way that you and I and J. Mike and Kelly are doing, right? In either way, his brain was in a non, non-normative non state, if you want to say it, and he was uh, out cold, delirious, or in a coma. Once you add that fact into the equation, why can you not see very clearly that when brains are out of the normal state of being, they do funny things. We hear voices. We see things. When people do drugs, I was about they to say, see things. Drugs. Right? And it's no fault of the individual. It's not a lack of moral character that they saw this. It's not a lack of intelligence. It's not a lack of anything. But when the brain gets jostled, if I may use a phrase, they start, they start experiencing things in a weird way. And you admitted earlier that you don't believe your father on every single situation. It's, it's, it's situational that you depend, you do believe him because he can be wrong because he's a human. Why can you not accept the fact that he may have been just the victim of an altered brain state due to being in a coma and he imagined he had a hallucination, but it felt very real to him. Oh, also, if he had fallen out of a, a helicopter and went into a coma, I'm I'm assuming that there was some kind of traumatic brain injury involved in it, too. So how do we know that his brain was working correctly when he had this vision? I mean, probably not. But he also woke up to my grandmother's prayers. So that kind of that kind of like helps out with my belief also. Like he was in a coma for a couple of months and then he woke up to my grandmother's prayers once he visited my um once my grandmother visited him in the hospital. Then he woke up to my grandmother's prayers and then he rehabbed for a couple of years. Then he met my mother, had me, and then two years later he had my brother on the same day as me, and I was born on the seventh. So that kind of like that kind of like really shifts my my view on like my life because I'm like all of these fantastic things are happening at once in my life. Like it's wait, wait, wait fantastic. Is wait. Born on the seventh. Wait, wait, hold on, Mike. Fantastic. Like, are you lumping in the experience? your father went through such that you could have the revelation as like a good thing because like it seems odd that <laughs> that's how the mess the message has to be delivered through some horrific crash and it seems well, like there's a way better methodology are you lumping the well, lord works in mysterious ways J. Mike. <laughs> I, I would say more 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 to the point and i think maybe where you're getting jay mike is that uh we do know that people respond people in comas we know this from ex from like from the the database of knowledge that we have about people who have traumatic brain injuries people do wake up to the voice of their loved ones right not always prayer they wake up they start responding to the world the voice of a familiar person a familiar voice of a person they love draws them out of their coma we know that happens right you acknowledge that mike from georgia absolutely right, right. Absolutely. okay and but, so, uh, 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 go on, continue. Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna let you finish. I was gonna let you finish, but I'll I'll start talking. I'm gonna be only uh, here for, I'm only gonna talk for a short bit. But here's the thing. Hmm. My, my grandmother did not get a chance to visit my father until like maybe a few weeks until until he was in his coma because he was fighting in like um in the gulf war and his helicopter blew up and he fell from from the sky hit the ground was unconscious had for weeks nurses nursing to him probably sure. heard several thousand things and then up up he hears one prayer from my grandmother and he wakes up and he's because the brain recognizes the voice. Like, the brain recognizes the voice. Yeah, Mike from, is... from Georgia, your your standards of evidence are very low. You, it sounds like, and I'm not sure if you're a jokester because you're having a good time, and, and I we love it when people have a good time on our calls. But you do sound like maybe no, you're a jokester because the reason why it sounds like you're a jokester is because honestly, if 
I were to hear this kind of talk outside of this show, like at a party or something like that, like get the f out of here, dude, come on, you know better than that. But maybe you don't. There's a lot of people who call the show who actually believe these kind of things. And perhaps you're one of them. Look, you, you said he heard a lot of different voices. He was in a coma for a long, for, for a period of weeks or however many days. How, how unusual is it for people to remain in Tacomas, for their brain to be healing and, and rewiring itself, whatever it is that brains do. I'm sure Shannon Q could tell us more about that. And then finally, after having, having healed for a period of time, he heard a familiar voice at the right moment. She could have been, she could have been reading the cat in the hat and he would have, he would have woken up to that. It may be. Why do you, why are you so certain that it was the prayer that did it? I mean, it's because my father uh, told me and I don't really believe in like, I don't really believe that it could be coincidence after coincidence after coincidence just stacking up to form just one solid story. Like this is an unbelievable story. And no, it's very believable, oh, Mike. Oh man. So, so your mother, so your mother prayed, your 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 grandmother, sorry, your grandmother prayed to sweet Jesus, asking for her son to be released from this from the the bonds of an injury, a coma. And God had an internal plan and said, "Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Line item veto. I'm going to change that. I'm going to write he awakens from his coma and he is fine. He's going to tell the story to his son after he meets his wife and send it off to the presses. Meanwhile, there are people in developing nations who are being tortured, attacked, starved, murdered, uh, other things that are terrible that I won't say. They call out with all of their soul, all of their heart, all of their need and desperation to a God that just sends another hurricane their way. And that's the cosmic justice that you think is uh, exists in the world. Yes. And uh, well, I wouldn't call that cosmic justice, but I know it's an incredible story, and that's why I, I, I feel so humbled by this incredible God that he shared this story with me. Yeah, like, I, I don't. I, I feel so honored that. Huck, sure. well, could it, uh, do you want to speak? No, but I don't believe you. Do you want to speak? I'm, yeah, I do want to speak. What? I'm going to go ahead and mute you. I don't believe you. I don't believe that anyone could be so callous. I'm very spicy today, folks out there in YouTube land. I'm very, very spicy. And I am going to now turn this, the rest of this call over to J. Mike and Kelly because um, I, I think that they would handle the rest of it better than I would. So uh, let me go ahead and unmute. I'm, I'm just honestly like, I, th I feel like we've kind of hit the head on it. You have a view. You don't have, I mean, my, to kind of recap, I wanted to know what the evidence was for the bio, because I thought you were going to go more into talking about the account, the biblical account, and how that's a better account of biodiversity on, on the earth. But I didn't really get any of that. I didn't like get any evidence or any, something new that we don't currently know that we could tell from the Christian God hypothesis or however you want to phrase it. Uh, and then we kind of narrowed down that your methodology was accepting something that your father had said, we pointed out kind of many issues with that. So I don't really know where else to take it with you, Mike, to be honest. Like, do you think, like, let me just ask you, do you, do you think that this is a good methodology? Do you think that this guarantees truth for you? Do you go on your life, like not doubting this is sufficient for you? Cause it's hard for me to believe that you do this as well. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm quite fine right now with like the evidence that God gave me. And I just like to respond to what uh, the gentleman, I don't know what his name is, but I don't know why it's cruel, like for me to acknowledge my story. Like I get that other people suffer throughout the world. But if I take that like personally and be like, man, why should I eat? Because millions of people aren't like, I can't, I can't, I acknowledge that other people are suffering in the world, and this humbles me as a human being. I'm not boastful. I'm not saying to myself, 
okay, so God gave me this incredible story. Mike, Mike, before like before me. we go off on another tangent about something else, um, let, let's go back to the story about your father and the angel. And um, Johnny asked you if whether you would believe that about the pterodactyl taking away the small dog. And you said, no, I would want more evidence. And I'm wondering why you believe the one story about the angel without more evidence, but you're willing to not believe the pterodactyl and the dog story without more evidence. Over. Because, pterodact because pterodactyls are physical creatures. So if it flew away, it would probably fl fly away. But, but, don't, but don't you understand that we think a god is a mythological creature? It's not a creature that exists either. Over. Over. Well, Sorry, Johnny. I forgot the over. Uh, uh, huh? I'm sorry. Could, could you repeat yourself? I didn't hear you. Maybe we should over and out. <laughs> I think I, we might want to over and out, but but maybe we should. Kelly, no, asked, Ke Kelly asked a really good question. Yeah, yes. yeah. Kelly, Kelly, would you please ask that question again? Over. I, my, my question was, is that we think that God is also a mythological creature. Like you think the pterodactyl would is, or doesn't exist today on, in the earth. So what is the difference between the two when it comes to asking for evidence? Over. I didn't say that. It I, I didn't say that a pterodactyl is a mythological creature. I said a pterodactyl. Well, well, like, well, I quantified it by saying that it, or, or doesn't exist in the earth today. Like, we don't know that a God exists on the earth today. We don't have the evidence for that, right? So I'm asking you why the why you would ask for evidence for one and not the other when both things don't exist on the earth as far as we know. Over. Well, well God did not go extinct like a couple of million years ago. And if... But we don't know that God ever existed, Mike. You're not, you're not even showing us that God ever existed. You're just assuming that we believe that. Roger Kelly. Well, well, I'm just a regular layman. I don't know what particularly how I could show you that God existed. Like, do you have like a, uh, I, do you have like a standard or a test? Well, I, I me personally, I would want unambiguous empirical evidence personally, but that's not what I'm asking you for. What I'm asking you for is why one situation you believe you need more evidence for but you don't need more evidence for the other situation when both situations involve a being that doesn't exist on the earth. But in or, one case, we actually have evidence that one of the beings did actually exist. Well, a pterodactyl, a pterodactyl like did exist on the earth at some point, but these are two different things. Like if I did a god, a lion escape. Hold on. Can I finish? But, all right, who wants to talk? Y'all can talk. No, over. Go ahead. No, Sorry, that's my bad. You. Go ahead. That's my bad. Uh, uh, okay, so who wants to talk? Do anybody want to talk? Well, Mike, we're just going to move on if we're going to play the trades. It's your, it's your yeah. turn. Go ahead. Yeah. Mike, no, no, give no. us, I'll, I'll give talk. us, I'll Mike, I'll give talk. us your evidence for talk. the existence of God. And then we're going to over and out you. All right? Go ahead. Best evidence. Best evidence. We can put the clock up if we need. Put the clock up. Actually, you know what? Put the clock up. And the clock, Mike, is going to be 60 American seconds where you can give us. Hold I on. want you to I think about want... it. I want you to think about it, Mike. Give us your best evidence that you can think of, the thing that's most compelling to you, right? And we'll, we'll decide if it's compelling to us uh, for the existence well, of a God. All right. Other than. If you we're, 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 story, we're gonna start we the, we're starting the clock just say over when you're done if you don't need all the 60 seconds go ahead go for it okay well i i i mean i don't know what to give you like as in like evidence i didn't really come prepared i just want to say my personal story and then be done with it so if you want to stop talking then we could stop talking right now but i don't really have like i could i guess i could google something if you want me to but i no, don't really have no. like like uh evidence let's just evidence concede like that. i think i think we're i think we're over and out yeah. here we appreciate it mike i mean you, you yeah, seem mike. like a nice person to talk to but we're just like we're on different levels of like what we value in terms of evidence what we care about in terms of like what can you know convinces us propositions that we're willing to accept i think we're just playing a different game than you are playing yeah. you know yeah mike thanks for calling i'm going to go ahead and over and out you and i'm letting you go 
Um, so folks at home who, who are watching this, you might think, why did we spend so much time with this call? Because in this call, there's a, there's a nutshell of the kind of calls we get over and over again. And it's not just Mike from Georgia who, who says it. And, and sometimes they're a little bit more articulate or not, but it usually comes down to something, un, something I can't explain happened. And I have no other explanation for it. I concluded that it was sweet baby Jesus or Allah on his flying horse, or it was, you know, one of them, one of them elephant or monkey gods from Hinduism or whatever. And, and it has to be them because I can't think of anything else, even though when other people make claims that are fantastical, things you don't run into every day, I don't believe those claims. Uh, how do they know that it was Vishnu? How do they know it was Zarathustra? Oh, I don't believe that those those gods exist. And so we got a perfect example of this here. And I think we were hoping that Mike was going to rise to the occasion and was going to give us something a little bit more than nothing. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I was a little disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. I, will, I would just add as a Mike, as also a Mike from, from Georgia myself, uh, Johnny, you'd be surprised that uh, when I have these conversations with people uh, and in, in the out in the open in Georgia, you get some stories kind of like this. So it might be yeah. different. Might be different where you're at, but where I'm at, this is uh, it's par for the course. So I, yeah. I, I get a lot of those stories here too, Mike. Over 